croissant on my face. Uh, no, you don't. No, you okay. Don't. <laughs> ready. No croissant. Right. Ready for an interview. Let's go. All right. What's up, guys? Um, my name is Kenji, and welcome to the video. Um, so today I have a very special guest with me, who is... Hello! Atusa. <laughs> Um, so we met in the labs and I used to watch her YouTube channels, uh, her YouTube channel and one day I saw her and I was like, oh, I should go say hi. Um, <laughs> and in this video we'll be talking about what you can do with biomedical science degree because uh -huh. although I do, I did biomedical science myself, I never really kind of focused my, yeah. you know, my future on what I can do with biomedical science degree because yeah. I wanted to do medicine. Um, so I, you know, it's probably the perfect person to talk about it. So do you want to tell okay. everyone a little yes. bit about yourself? So hello, Kenji's subscribers, nice to be here. Um, so as Kenji said, my name is Atisa. I did my undergraduate degree in biomedical sciences. Um, same as Kenji, but I did mine at Newcastle, Newcastle University. Mm -hmm. And I currently work as a research technician at King's College London, and I work within St. John's Institute, which is a dermatology, but um, our specific group, group works on cancer research, so I do a lot of work with things like melanoma and ovarian cancer and those kind of things. Mm. And um, I actually want to go and do medicine, which is exactly what Kenji is doing. So he did biomedical sciences and he got into medicine straight off that. Mm -hmm. But I think I only realised I wanted to do medicine after doing my undergraduate, doing a master's, which I guess we can talk about later. Mm -hmm. And then kind of being really involved in like the research route and um, cancer research and doing all those kind of things. So that's my little brief introduction. Great. Like. Right, so to get into the topic of the video, um, what can you do with biomedical science degree? Like what do you think of the different paths that you can take mm -hmm. if you are someone who is doing biomedical science or mm -hmm. wanting to think about doing it? Um, okay, so the first thing I want to say is don't think that there is nothing to do. I, I've made like so many videos about this, talking about how I just have so many free cuts thinking that's it, I've done a yeah, useless yeah. degree, and I don't know if you felt the same way. If I didn't use medicine, I probably would feel that way, not gonna lie, yeah. Yeah, and there are so many things you can do. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people will tell you the advice of, oh, you know, with a biomedical sciences degree, you can go into law, you can go into business, and if you are like me, you would think, I didn't spend three years in science yeah, yeah. to go and do something else. Exactly. Um, so just to keep it brief, I suppose, there mm -hmm. are so many things you can do. Um, as I said, currently I work as a research technician, mm -hmm. so that's just one option you can go down. Yeah. Um, you can go into medical communication, and okay. essentially there are so many routes to that. Part mm -hmm. of medical communication is that you get to, I guess, take all of these like yeah. science journals and the research that people like us do in the lab mm -hmm. and um, write it in a way that the public, the general public mm -hmm. can understand. So like translating to like lay Exactly, lay to lay, yes, exactly. Okay. That's a really big deal. But another alternative is that you can do a similar thing, but instead of for the general public, you um, kind of educate doctors on oh, research. Yeah. And I think that's really important because oh, as yeah. a medic, mm -hmm. you think a lot of the things that you work on mm -hmm. comes from the lab. So it takes Definitely. people to kind of simplify it and think, well, how do we get this from research into the clinics? Mm -hmm. um, aside from that, you can do, um, listen, there are so many things. There's there like are a so PhD, many things. like masters, like further, yes. further education. Further right? education, absolutely. Yeah. That's a really big thing. And I think a lot of people who go down the third, further education route yeah. choose more of like an academic, um, mm -hmm career route, which I think is a very rewarding mm -hmm. path to go down. Um, other than that, there are other things such as working in pharmaceutical industries. Okay. Um, so, so what does that entail? What, what does that do right. That? So a lot of the things you can do within pharma companies is uh, developing drugs. Mm -hmm. So the way the timeline might work is yeah. that somebody like myself or my group would do some mm -hmm. kinds of research. Yeah. And then we may see a potential for the research we do to get turned into a drug. Right, right. And then if you work in the pharmaceutical industry, mm -hmm. you can either go and work in the lab and mm -hmm. do some of the research, or for people who love science but don't love the lab, which is absolutely fine, yep. you can do more of the, not administration, but kind of like mm -hmm. the behind the scenes of like the science and stuff that goes behind the drugs and legislations and yeah. all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I think, I know personally a lot of people who did biomed who work mm. in clinical trial jobs and okay. clinical trial coordinators. Mm. 
and that is essentially enrolling patients into studies, following them up, you get to have a lot of patient contact, mm -hmm. you get to be really involved in the science and you get to be published on papers. Yep. Um, and I think that's a really good mix of both mm -hmm. if you don't necessarily want to go and do medicine and you don't necessarily want to do just lab based Yeah, work. yeah, definitely. So those are just some examples. Okay. There's, there's much, a lot, yeah. there's a lot. Actually, I will send, I, I have made an older video about this, but I'm going to send Kenji all of the links mm. to that, so you guys could go and have a look. Well, that would be really good. Yeah, I'll put that down in the description, definitely. Yeah. Oh, so good. I know I know it can get really disheartening when you feel like um, there isn't a lot to do, but there's yeah. plenty. And to kind of like go back to your, your job, so mm -hmm. you said you're a research uh, technician here. Mm -hmm. What exactly like is your day-to-day -day life, or what do you do, you know, for a living? Yeah, so I mean, um, I, I do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. My job is a little bit unique in that some people who work as research technicians or research assistants yeah. work on a research, one research project. Mm -hmm. um, now I do a lot of different things. So I work on clinical trials. So essentially when our group is currently running a phase one clinical trial, on a drug that they develop in the lab, which is so cool, it's so it's cool, it's so cool. Yeah. Um, so something that we worked on in the lab is now being administered to patients and is being tested. Mm -hmm. And part of my job, for example, is to identify the patients who might be benefit, uh, who might benefit this. And okay. um, so I get to go and go to clinics and speak to patients. Mm -hmm. And once we like un enroll these patients into our study, yeah. um, we have to take blood from them, and I carry out some experimental assays to say, is this person suitable, are they reacting well to the drug, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So that's one part of it. Okay. Um, the other part of it is involved in patient uh, consenting, recruitment, identifying, mm -hmm. um, collecting samples from them, processing mm -hmm. blood, processing tissue, yeah. um, and storing these in our biobanking facility. Okay. So again, that is a bit more of like a patient mm -hmm. hands-on um, experience. Yeah. And finally, the, the, the third big chunk is more academic. So okay. it's working on actual like research questions. So they might have a question of, does the blood of somebody who has mm -hmm. like ovarian cancer differ yeah. to somebody who doesn't, and how does it do that? And then okay. we like, just do the experiments that way. Okay, that's so, so interesting. And how did you get into it? I think you said like you did your master's here, and then yes. you were sort of linked into this. Yes, absolutely. So I did my master's in transitional cancer medicine, mm -hmm. um, and it's an MRS course, and it's essentially 12 months of working in a lab. Mm -hmm. um, and when I did that, it kind of introduced me to what we call translational research. Okay. And to kind of paraphrase what translational research is, it's essentially bench to bedside, which yeah. is the work that you do on a lab bench, mm -hmm. how can you take it into the clinic? Mm -hmm. Um, and I just fell in love with it, and I think yeah. it's absolutely magical how okay. science can go into that. So that's how I got into that. Sure. What would you do if you didn't know what to do? Like if you were, were in biomed mm -hmm. and you're not so sure about you know, whether I should do medicine or should I do further education, mm -hmm. if you had no idea, what would you say is the best thing to, best thing to do? The best thing to start off with is mm. anything. I, I know it sounds like a bit of like a blanket statement, yeah. but Work experience is probably the key in most of these situations mm -hmm. and um, if your degree, for example, offers an industrial placement year, yeah. I don't know if yours, yours did, yeah, as well, did, ours did as well, if you are just going into biomed, mm -hmm. maybe think about doing an industrial year because it will give you an idea mm -hmm. um, of the kind of things you can do. Um, and you know, a lot of the people who are around, like your lecturers and stuff, will be more than happy to give you an opportunity to come into the lab and do a project. So I know you're doing that kind mm -hmm. of now, and you also did it at undergrad. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think doing experience is key. Yeah. And the other thing is talk to people who are actually in the job. Mm -hmm. One of, I, I think this is very unhelpful. Um, when you go to, for example, a careers advisor and say, what does this job entail? Yeah. They can only tell you so much. Yeah, you know, they're I mean. not actually doing it themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, we live in, we're so lucky to be living in a time where mm -hmm. like uh, people are doing all these amazing things and it's like literally one click away. Yeah, you know? that's so true. Yeah, because there's like, there's, you've seen there's been a couple of people come to my lab yeah. and, and your lab as well. Absolutely. Literally in their GCCs who come to our labs and just walk around and yeah. talk to us and ask us questions. Exactly. Which can definitely like, you know, help your decision. No, I definitely. Think. And I think it's so important. And I understand that you know not everybody has opportunity and access to those things. And I understand yeah. that some people may not have the confidence to go out and like mm -hmm. pursue those things, which is fine. Yeah. You know, we're all at different levels. Yeah. And if, if you are maybe a bit more introverted and you feel a bit shy, mm -hmm. YouTube, look around. Um, and yeah, I mean, there are, whenever I have a, like a burning question, I always turn to YouTube because Straight I know. YouTube yeah, actually, right. because there's always somebody who's smarter than you, who's been through more than you, who has more experience than so you. True. Yeah. And 
what you can do is put on your little adventure quest hat yeah, and yeah. either get out in the world and ask questions or do a web search and just try things out. Mm. I think that's mm. scary, isn't yeah. it? No, but definitely, yeah, definitely good. I think it's definitely about exposing yourself to where you yes, want to go. So absolutely. I did so much work experience, like not just medicine, mm -hmm. but it's in different areas, you know, yeah. wherever it is, even if it's like retail and you think you might want to do retail, just go and you know engross yourself in that mm -hmm. in that kind of environment. I think sometimes what you want another good piece of advice that it has helped me is to find out what you want to do, find out what you don't want to do. Yeah. Um I true. I took a year out after doing my undergrad and I was supposed to go travelling and stuff, but some of my plans fell through. And I ended up working in retail for half a year and then like working as a tutor for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. And I was like thinking about going and doing like a TFL course and teaching English mm -hmm. like in different countries. And then I realized that this is definitely not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it really gave me time to think, what do I want to do? Yeah, yeah. So when I say do anything, it's like anything that you can do can help you answer that question a bit better. Mm -hmm. A really important point is that rejection is not necessarily rejection, it's a redirection. So if you go down like to do work experience and you do work experience as something completely random and you think actually this is not for me and yeah. maybe I'm not smart enough, maybe I'm not uh, interested in it at all, mm -hmm. it's not a rejection and it's not the end of the road, it's a redirection to what you want to do in your future. And I think that's yeah. such a key thing to, to, to think about. Absolutely. And just one more thing because you just reminded mm -hmm. me, I think that's like a really, really wise word. Yeah. And um, and the other thing I can tell you is there are so many situations that I have been with the being in in the past and even now where you literally feel like everybody else is smarter than you, everybody else knows what they're doing. Yeah. But definitely. especially when it comes to work experience, because yeah, you're like, oh, yeah. am I getting in the way? Just remember that if you are the smartest person in the room, there's no room for you to grow. Yeah, so, it's true. You're in the wrong room. Exactly. Yeah. I remember freaking out so many times when I was doing my work experiences, thinking everyone thinks I'm stupid, everybody mm -hmm. can do things and I can't. But that's what made me grow because yeah. I had to look up to people who were better than me to pull myself up. So that's so true. That's The next question I kind of want to ask is, mm -hmm. if you're unsure about what you want to do in your future, and mm -hmm. you feel like you do like science, yeah. but you're not so sure exactly what it is, would you recommend going down the biomedical science route? Absolutely. I think the best thing about biomedical sciences is that it's so open and varied, and I feel like there are so many skills that you can learn from biomed that you don't even realise you've gained until you come to apply it in like yeah. a non-science setting. Um, and I think the, one of the best things about biomed is that it's like, looked upon quite highly in all different fields mm. and even if you do biomed and at the end of it realize well actually i'm not a big fan of science there were so many opportunities for you to move away and go and do other things with yeah um, and as i said it's one of those courses that like teaches you analytical skills and mm. you know True. so many things that are transferable so i yeah. would say definitely okay. yeah. What about if you don't get to medical school, like as an alternative to medicine? Mm -hmm. I don't want to take away from biomedical science because it's an amazing degree. Yeah. But if you don't get to medical school, um, would you say you should go down the route of biomedical science? Again, absolutely. Um, something that I've noticed, like from my own experience <clears throat> and like my friends' experiences, is that a lot of people apply to medicine in the first time. They don't get in. They go and do biomed, mm. and after doing biomed, they think, "Oh, actually, this is amazing. Like this is where I was supposed to be all along, not yeah. medicine." Um, so. If you don't get into medicine, I think biomed is still a really good option because if you look at where I am, where I am at the moment, my job is very patient facing and, yeah. and in addition to being involved in all the science and research, mm -hmm. I get to see patients, I get to go on the wards, I get to you know like talk to people. Mm -hmm. um, so there are opportunities if you're somebody like me who needs that patient contact yeah. to kind of satisfy those needs. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like as well as uh, like the job I do, I like to volunteer at a hospice and very in September we have applications opening for Great Ormond Street uh, volunteering with children. If anybody's in London and is interested, I know yeah. I will be applying. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Yeah, so, so if, you do, if you do enjoy the science but you feel like you want those needs to be kind of like met, there are things that you could do outside of that. So yeah. don't think that your career is like mm -hmm. the be all and end all of all of the things that you want to contribute. Definitely. So.
So if you don't get to medicine, you feel like you'd be happy with where you are and you're, you're more than happy like going down this route yeah, that you're definitely. at. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, um, and I have thought about this because, yeah. you know, there are, it is possible that I might not get into medicine this year and I might not get in if I keep trying. Yeah. And I've said to myself that if that's the case, then there are so many opportunities for me to grow where I am now. So yeah. I can go into a PhD, I can maybe look at working in industry, um, I can do any of these kind of science roles yeah. and also do things on the side mm. with patients. Yeah. And you just have to ask yourself why are you doing medicine is it because of the job or is it because there are so many things that you want to do that you could do yeah. if you're not a medic so just something to bear in mind definitely Atusha, thank you so much for coming on my channel yeah. um i didn't say it before but Atusha has a youtube channel as well um yeah. as i said i followed her first um, i was a bit of a fan girl and now she's on my channel which is it's amazing yeah it was um, a funny story <laughs> yeah uh, so i'll put a link for, for her channel in the description um, before I end the video, I think there's one thing that Atusha told me earlier on today, um, which I think, you know, sat with me really well and I thought was really good advice, is that if you're unsure about what to do in life, just go for it. If you, even if it's, um, what was it, if you said something like, if it's, if it's the wrong decision, yeah. do it anyways. Yeah, you I know? think making a decision is better than making no decision, because mm -hmm. if you make a decision and it's a bad decision, you can learn from it and move on. Exactly. Whereas if you get stuck in a, like, a state of indecision, then you yeah, just waste exactly. time. Yeah, exactly. Because when I didn't get to medicine, I was kind of like, what should I do now? You know, like, yeah. should I just like yeah. just wait another year? Yeah. Or, you know, what should I do in one test of my life? Mm -hmm. And I made a decision to go down the route of biomedical science. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm finally a medic and I got where I wanted to be. Um, so even, and then even yeah. if it didn't work out, like even, I remember back last year, mm -hmm. um, I got three rejections. And this is before yeah. I got my interview for Kings. And I was kind of like, wow, so I've just spent three years yeah. and I didn't get you know, to where I want to be. I know. And I was kind of like, what should I do now? Um, but it all worked out because I made that one decision just to pursue you know, my future in biomedical science and, you know, medicine as well. Yeah. And if I didn't get into medical school, I, I'm, I'm sure that I'd be so happy, I'd be really happy now. Um, I would have found something else I'd love to do. Yeah. So just make that decision and, you know, I'm sure it will go your way yes. somehow. And one final thing I want to say is that, like, you being like such an inspiration to me because like I feel like since we've oh. met I kind of but it's nice because I you know being somebody who like I've kind of taken the longer route I don't mm. regret it mm. but like to see that you kind of did a similar thing and now you're a medic and like I just think you know, one day one day it could be me <laughs> one so, day it will be definitely yeah. and if any of you guys are watching this then I hope that you can be somewhat inspired by our stories I mean, okay, so. we're yeah, not special so. are we like At if all. we can do it any of you guys can get that so. exactly so uh, yeah thanks so much for watching the video Check out Atusa's channel, subscribe to her, subscribe to me as well. Uh, give a like to my video and her videos as well. Um, and let us know what you want to see in the future, because um, so Atusa and I work in the same place. Um, yes. Alongside my degree, I do work in the labs as well. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything in particular you guys want to know more about, just let yeah. us know and hopefully we can get that done for you. Yes, thank you. So thanks Everything so much, Atusa. Thank, yeah. thank you for having me on your channel. You're very welcome. <laughs> and uh, I'll be on her channel, the channel as well in the future. Yes, I have so. a, we have like a joint video, so go mm -hmm. and watch that video on my channel. Definitely. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!